It had been a little while. I can't even remember the last time I came on here and did a Q&A video and felt like it was a good time to do so. So we're going to go ahead and do one. I thank all of you that took to Twitter and submitted questions for consideration. I say consideration because I'm not going to answer all of the questions. Some of them are repetitive. Some of them just frankly don't interest me. It doesn't mean that I'm not thankful for the questions and the submissions. Sometimes it's just a matter of the mood that I'm in and trying to get this all done in one video, frankly. So I did kind of pick and choose some questions here. We're going to go with what I got, and we'll see how this goes. Remember to follow me on Twitter, so that way when I ask for future Q&A video questions, you can submit them there. Let's go ahead and get started, though. Trinell Sally starts us off by asking, Who is more tone deaf? Not D-E-A-F. But D-E-A-T-H, I'm kidding, Trinell. It happens to all of us. <laughs> the McMahon family or the Rhodes family? Oh, believe me. Any chance or opportunity there is to take a shot at the Rhodes family, specifically Cody, I'm all for. But when you talk about tone deaf, uh, the McMahon family is on an entire, entirely different level. We know this. <laughs> I mean, like I said, I could take the easy way out and go the way you might think that I was going to and just say, hey, it's an excuse to shit on Cody Rhodes. Let's come up with legitimate ones, is what I would say, because there are plenty of them. This is not one of them. The McMahon family, specifically Vince McMahon, are way more tone deaf than the Rhodeses could ever imagine to be. There you go. Fierce Eyes Leslie. Ooh, it's a lady. When did... <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler strike a nerve with you? See? And when you ask the question, you cannot ask in regular that, you know, first name, last name format. It must be in... <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler format. It should be a file format. Um, That's been over a decade now. Like, when he first kind of came in and... He was shaking people's hands and he's introducing himself, his little prick calling himself, saying, hi, I'm Dolph Ziggler. Like, I actually liked Dolph then. And then I realized he never grew in terms of his skills. He never developed. He never got any better. I had to listen to back in the day, Tony on the show and so many other people online talk about how fucking great Dolph Ziggler was. Knowing that he wasn't, but they were trying to make him out that he was. And then you'd see him and you're saying... If I've seen one Ziggler match, I've seen all of them. Dressing like a middle school girl, getting hairstyles like a middle school girl, nothing unique or specific to him. A bunch of rip-off shit. A whack-ass, badass Billy Gunn knockoff. Like, now we've gotten to the point where it goes beyond that. It's the fact of when I hear all this talk about budget cuts, I look at him and I say, what you're paying him, you could pay four to six other talents. And at this point in time, I would much rather play the larger pool than the one specific wrestler. And I would much rather have the four to six talents because this guy's had a job there somehow, some way in that company for a decade and a half. And it's long since time to say goodbye once and for all. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. Thank you for the question. Magnificent Matt asked, if Kurt Angle wasn't medically cleared for WrestleMania, who would you have had in the WWE title match on that show? Um, I think the easy answer is, it's got to be Austin. Since Austin didn't do the job for him in the King of the Ring tournament that year, he had already beaten Rock at SummerSlam. He had submitted Hogan with the damn bear hug on SmackDown, if you remember, in the lead up to that SummerSlam 2002. He needed to beat Austin. Because what was the alternative? You have Austin and Rock go on second to last at WrestleMania 19 and now Austin's finally going to lose to The Rock when it doesn't fucking matter and doesn't help anybody. Brock Lesnar could have beat Austin in the main event at WrestleMania and it would have mattered way more. So it would have been Austin would have been my choice. Because if you were trying to establish him as the next big thing and make him the true face of your new era, he had to beat the faces of the old era. And he'd already beaten Rock, but he needed to beat Austin there. Little DJ boy, do you think the Wednesday night wars were exaggerated? Do I like black women? For those of you that don't get it, yes, of course it was fucking over exaggerated. Big time. 
Hey, what's up, boys? And we gotta have some truth talk here. Like a lot of fans live on this Khan I Stan Island for Tony Khan. That everything he does is great and he's wonderful and he's so awesome and they're so happy. And look, I am appreciative for the fact that we have a second major North American wrestling company. Like that's a cool thing. That's a good thing for everybody involved. I completely agree with that. I am happy and thankful for that. But the reality is so many people ascribing this greatness to him that isn't merited. If you had the financial resources that he did and the backstop to say, hey, I can always draw off of my daddy's money, my daddy's many billions, like, how well would you do? If you were given the same opportunities in life as a Tony Khan, how well would you do? And when you look at it, even when you go back to when they first started going head to head in October of 2019, you know, the debut episode of Dynamite when you had NXT running head to head on USA Network on that Wednesday night for two hours. They did 2.3 plus million viewers combined for both shows. Now Dynamite on Wednesday nights can't even get to 900,000 consistently. So yes, the wars were fucking an exaggerated hype for nothing. It was stupid. It was counterproductive. It didn't help NXT. It didn't help any AEW. Everybody lost. They're fucking dumb. And only the markiest of marks thought it was cool. Oh, N underscore Sank asks, do you think it's long past time for the fans to get over the Jeff Hardy obsession and accept the fact that he's a screw-up? You know, I've avoided any real comment about Jeff Hardy other than asking, is Jeff Harvey technically under contract with WWE still? <laughs> um, I will probably address this, Nicholas, in a separate video because I don't want to tie it up here because I just don't know that it's worth talking about that much. And I say that to say we have so many other things that we can invest our energies in. He's just not worth it. That's both if you want to give all types of well wishes to him and, the, and hatred. Either way, I think you have better places you can invest those resources. Do I think it's time for them to get over their obsession? Like, they can do whatever the hell they want, but, you know, at some point in time, you do have to call out, like, how much more do you continue to support somebody who has exhibited consistently the self-destructive behavior? And at what point in time do you stop making excuses for it and stop feeling sorry for him about it? I may talk about it in a different video. I may not. I may not talk about it much at all because I just don't have a ton of interest. Honestly. And you know, that's what I get for even trying to be nice and recently saying that, hey, the fans are really getting behind Jeff Hardy so they need to take advantage of that and put him in a spot. I guess by better judgment, I knew better. And that's my own damn fault. Diclonius Games asks, better TNA segment, the Jay Lethal Ric Flair woo-off or Scott Steiner's math <laughs> segment. I mean, <laughs> Jay Lethal and Ric Flair in the woo-off was great. Okay? Scott Steiner's math promo about Senor Joe's chances at sacrifice is all-timer stuff. It's all-timer stuff. Like even people that don't watch wrestling anymore, haven't watched in years or never watch it, I see post a clip of this or post a gif of this or gif of this or something. A meme of this something. Scott Steiner's math promo and his math lesson stands the test of time in a way that Jay Lethal, Ric Flair, like that was cool, but it wasn't on that damn level. <laughs> Mid Carter J. What would it take for you to review the Marine? Me losing my fucking senses. Or if I had a Patreon account, somebody having to make a big donation. And maybe we'll consider that in 2022, but you want that to happen, you gotta put your money where your goddamn mouth is. Commando 1986, otherwise I have no fucking interest in it. Thoughts on Ric Flair saying Randy Savage was not a great worker. Did he actually say this? I'm sure he did because Ric Flair has been known to be petty and say really stupid shit like that um, and try to prop himself up by knocking others down. Like that's a kind of Ric Flair standard at this point. Um, did he actually say this though? I will answer your question under the presumption with the qualifier that this is true. I will say the same thing here that I would say to Ric Flair to his face. That's fucking stupid and you know better. And you have no room to talk when you can sit there and literally look at a two-decade-plus recap of Ric Flair's career and say, if 
If you saw one of his matches, you pretty much saw them all. And let's see him try to get a great match out of the Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania 7. Savage did that. So fuck that. Randy Savage wasn't a great worker. Fuck's wrong with you? He's a bigger star than Ric Flair ever could pretend to be. Period. Certainly made more money in professional wrestling than Ric Flair ever did. Hey, what the fuck is that? Randy Savage, not a great worker. How do you say that about somebody like Hogan? That could be dependent upon your interpretation. You say about this guy or that guy. I get it. But Savage? That's stupid. Really stupid. Liam Patrick, 1993. Is the IWC worse now than it was 10 years ago? Certainly a lot of the faces have changed. It's definitely very different. Um, a lot of the people have changed. And the style of content, in my opinion, has gotten markedly worse. You know, when YouTube had the switch in the algorithms a few years back and started rewarding those that put out very long two to three hour podcasty style videos, like that's when the IWC started losing the fucking plot. Became very repetitive. You lost a lot of the uniqueness. Everybody sounds very much the same. Yeah, it's not just angry man yelling at the clouds, but just objectively, it is fucking worse. Personality's gone. Uniqueness is gone. Different forms and styles of presentation largely gone. Like for some of these cats doing these two or three hour videos. Come on, dudes. Tut tut today, Junior. Wrap that shit up. Kafense Dennis. How long until you're doing an assumed Cody Rhodes position? No, that will always be ascribed to the other founder, the one true founder. But we're at that point where I need to figure out a different jam for Cody Rhodes. That's for goddamn sure. Taha 9501. What was your reaction when AEW was founded? I mean, you probably have videos and tweets that you could go back and look at. This was only a couple of years ago. It was a combination of, if it, I, I would assume, and I could be wrong here, so please, please feel free to fact check me. It was a combination of, I had my doubts about some things, but also was thinking, hey, you know what, if this does work to some degree, that... You know, this is going to be a big positive for the business. We'll see how this works in the long term. And I still have some of those questions. Um, I didn't think it was going to be an instant failure, but I worry like just how much of a success they were going to be. But come on, guys, do a little research. It's only a couple of years ago. Super J610, who is Punk dodging more? Sting or Hook? One is the son of Taz that men seem to be fawning over. Now, you're going to say, well, the women are crushing over him. Is that so? Is that really true? It seems like the guys have fucking crushes on Hook. But beyond question, we know who CM Punk is dodging the most. Because the opportunity was there. The platform was available. He failed to take the leap. Because he didn't want to go to icon status, damn it. It could have been Sting versus CM Punk at Bound for Glory, brother. So he's dodging Sting and he fucking knows it. Tyler Tenorio, will you do another 12 days of Christmas? Maybe. Maybe. I got like two days to decide. Maybe. Byron Andreas, should Akeem the African Dream be the first black AEW champion? He's at the ripe young age of 60. That's right. There is no tomorrow. The future is now. Akeem the African Dream. That's the first And if that makes you mad, <laughs> you should redirect your anger at the fact that this could even be a joke because there haven't been any black male AEW world champions. We're not very close to it. It's not going to happen anytime soon, very likely. That's what you should be angry at. Keep <laughs> the African dream. Only at the Slickster's there, baby. <laughs> Noah Avilis. What are some aspects of today's wrestling business that you really like? Not a lot. Obviously, the tribal chief. Obviously, our greatest political leader of this generation, Brian Danielson. In the, especially in the current role that he's in. But there's not a lot. It's not that great. It just isn't. And Hashira95 is going to close this out by asking, What does Charlotte Flair botch more? Her moonsaults or her boyfriends? <laughs> How about ex-husbands and fiancés? 
God. <laughs> Can the answer be yes? <laughs> but I'm assuming as many men as she's run through, she has run through way more botched moonsaults. So let's give credit where credit is due. That botchy bitch has botched so many fucking moonsaults in her career. It's got to be moonsaults. But <laughs> the boyfriends are trying to make up the distance, damn it. This is better. I enjoyed this. Thank you guys for the questions. I'll try and get back to a more regular cadence for some Q&A videos so I can put a little more content on this channel. I'm out.